What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to talk about the difference between single and double underscores in Python classes when naming attributes and functions and when you should use what. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to discuss the difference between single and double underscores when it comes to naming stuff in Python classes. And for this, I want to get started right away with code examples. So I don't want to talk about this on a theoretical level too much. Let's move to my current working directory. Let's create a new Python file. And here, let's create a simple Python class. So let's say we have a class, my class. And in this class, we want to have a simple constructor that takes self as a parameter. And now let's define three different types of attributes or variables here inside of this constructor. Let's say I have self dot public variable equal to 10. I have self dot underscore private variable equal to 20. And self dot underscore underscore hidden, or you could also call this truly private variable. Actually, I've forgotten L up here. So hidden variable is equal to 30. Now, this is not something that is only related to best practices and coding style and your uh, the, the beauty level of your code, this actually has a functional difference. But before we talk about what's different, let's talk about what doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter how you name these uh, attributes or these variables, all of this inside of the class behaves in the same way. So if I have some method here, print all, it doesn't really matter what I call these things, I can always just say print self dot public variable, I can say, well, let me just copy paste this here. I can say print underscore private variable. And I can say print underscore underscore hidden variable. So this doesn't make any difference here. Regardless of the naming, I can go ahead and say MC is equal to my class. And I can say MC dot print all. And when I run this, you can see I get 10, 20, 30. So that does not have any effect on that. The difference is what happens when I try to access these attributes outside of the class. And this is not only true for uh, variables, this is also true for functions. So if I have some function here, um, print all is a public function, let's go with underscore private function or method actually. Uh, let's say this prints hello. And then let's say I have some hidden method, by the way, the naming doesn't really matter in terms of what keywords you use. So the functions are not or the variables and functions are not private, hidden or public, because the keyword is in there. The only thing that matters is the underscore, uh, or the two underscores. But let's say here the hidden method prints world. And what you will notice is that if you try to now use these methods or access these attributes, uh, you will sometimes succeed and sometimes not. So if I say print MC public, variable, this is of course going to work. But let's see what happens if I try to access the private variable and what happens if I try to access the hidden variable. So if I run this code now, you're going to see that I get 10 and 20 still so I get public and private successfully. But for hidden variable, I get uh, my class object has no attribute hidden variable, did you mean private variable? So it does not find this hidden variable. And the same thing is also true for the method. So if I say MC dot private method, and I call this and I do the same thing here with the hidden method. You're going to see actually I need to comment this out. Otherwise, it crashes my script. But you can see I get a hello here because the private method can be executed or can be called. But it again doesn't know about the hidden method. However, as we saw, since the print all function works, I can access the hidden variable and I can also access inside of the class the hidden method. So this is not really a problem. Um, so let's talk about the difference here. When you define something as being a public variable, if you don't use any underscores in the beginning, you don't um, you have underscores because it's snake case, but you don't have underscores here in the beginning to uh, somehow modify the visibility here. If you do that, what you're saying basically is that this is part of the public API. This is something that the user of that class, the user of this thing should use and should call manually. This is part of something that the user should have access to. 
Now, when we have something with a leading underscore, that is not actually part of the public API. Um, it should actually be private, but you still allow the user if for some reason the user wants to do it, you still allow the user to interact with that variable interact with that function. Um, so it is private in terms of as a notation. So to signal it should be private, and it's not part of the public API, we just add a uh, underscore in the beginning, but it's not actually private in terms of not being able to access it. So uh, can still be accessed, but not part of public API. And when you use two underscores, something happens, which is called uh, name, what was it called name mangling. So name mangling basically means it's being renamed. Now inside of the class, you can still use it, but outside of the class, you cannot use it, but it still exists. So the thing that you're looking for, the, the thing that you're trying to call, you cannot call it by this name. So again, this crashes, but I can still call it with the new name that is automatically being created by this double underscore. So what I have to do to actually call this or to actually access the variable or to actually access the method is I have to say MC underscore. So single underscore, then my class, the class name and then underscore underscore hidden variable. And the same goes for the method, I would have to say underscore my class underscore underscore hidden method. And when I run this, you can see everything works. So what happens here is name angling, it's no longer named hidden variable from the outside, it's named my class hidden variable, my class hidden method. Technically speaking, if I really, really want to do it, I can still access uh, the method or the attribute if I want to, but this is done to prevent accidental access or accidental um, overriding of a function, for example. So this is actually what it means to have a truly private uh, method, but of course, you can still access it if you really want to, you just have to use this uh, new name, but you cannot just use it accidentally because you type in underscore underscore hidden method, for example. Now, maybe one small thing for those of you who are wondering about that, sometimes you will find stuff, uh, for example, in scikit-learn, if you do some grid search, you will find if you have some grid search element, you will find stuff like dot best underscore estimator, and then you will have an underscore in the end. Now, this has no effect on whether this is a private public or hidden or truly private uh, variable or function or whatever. Usually, there is some notation or, or there's some some um, convention about this, I think in scikit-learn, it means that whatever has an underscore in the end, I'm not sure if this is limited to scikit-learn, though, maybe it's a general Python thing. But in the case of scikit-learn, this, for example, means that everything that has this underscore in the end is computed during runtime. So it's not provided by the user, it's not a parameter. Um, it is used to indicate that this is something that that exists as a result of doing the grid search, for example. Uh, and sometimes also you're going to see stuff like class underscore. So if you have a Python keyword like class, which you don't want to use as a variable or parameter name, you can just say class underscore, or if you have something like str, str underscore, stuff like this can also be done to prevent uh, name conflicts. But to summarize, if you don't provide any leading underscores, it's just part of the public API. If you provide a single one, it's more of a notation to specify that it's not part of the public API, but, but you can still use it. And if you provide two underscores, uh, name mangling happens, and the method is renamed to underscore class name, and then the name of the method. So that is the difference here. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.